Hey guys, it's Summer Rain from Homestead, Brooklyn. So many of you know that earlier this month we did a plant swap here in New York City, which was tremendous fun and such an incredible way to get the local plant community together under one roof. Some of you have expressed interest in doing one in your area, but you don't know where to start. So the goal of this video is to help you organize your very own plant swap in 10 steps. So let's start with what is a plant swap? Firstly, a plant swap is simply an event where fellow plant owners can come together to swap their plants. This could be done anywhere, like at someone's home, at a public park or community garden, at a church or community center, or even a local business, which is where we had ours. The rules of a plant swap, I mean, I'm sure there could be many rules, but ours were simple. Bring a pest-free, beautiful plant or two or three for trade. They could be potted or bare root, as long as you're prepared to part with them. And I found that most people brought more than one plant, and of course, those who had more interesting varieties ended up going home with cooler stuff. The first step of a plant swap is gauging interest. You have to see if you could get some initial interest from fellow plant lovers. So I posted on my Instagram to gauge the interest, and much to my amazement, I had over 50 replies. I'm sure there are other ways to gauge interest, like posting in meetup groups or Facebook groups and even emailing just a few friends. The second step is finding a place to host. Not many houses in the city can support 50 people comfortably, so I decided to reach out to one of the local businesses that hosts community events. Given that the event would likely happen in October in the Northeast, I really didn't want to chance the weather outdoors, so finding something indoors was really imperative. Lululemon's Hub 17 on 5th Avenue was an obvious choice for me because I had thrown events there before and I'm also one of their ambassadors. But it's okay if you don't have those connections because it's all about reaching out and building those connections. So send an email, attend another community or business event, and ask if they would be interested in hosting you and your group. The third step is in-kind sponsors, and of course this is optional. But once the basics are in place, like the place, the date, and time, then you could decide as to whether you want or can get any in-kind sponsors. In-kind sponsors are simply businesses that would be willing to give products like food or drink to your event. For our event, I reached out to Sweetgreen, which is an amazing salad company here in the city, and Health Aid Kombucha for the drinks. If you can't get sponsors, you can always host something simple. Maybe you just get chips and salsa and have some tap water on hand, or perhaps you make it a potluck and plant swap where everyone brings one dish and at least one plant to share and swap. The fourth step is ticketing. Because I had sponsors and I needed to get a head count for how many people would attend, I decided to have people RSVP and pay a nominal fee for the event, for which proceeds would go to support a local community garden. My experience is that if events are free, you have a larger drop-off rate, meaning people sign up but they just don't always show up. In my case, I wanted to make the tickets really affordable at $5 and have the benefit of raising money for a community garden, which is just good all the way around. We ended up raising over $300 for the garden, which will cover their summer lunch program for volunteers. The fifth step is finding partners. I wanted to make this plant swap a little more special, so I thought it would be cool to have a little Q&A session that was live streamed and to find partners who would also be interested. To do this, I reached out to a media company called Mind Body Green that writes on health and wellness issues, and also The Sill, which is a local plant shop. Together we formed a little panel that would happen before the evening's actual swap. The sixth step is selling tickets. Now that you have the initial interest from fellow plant lovers and the place, date, time, sponsors and partners, and ticket price in place, you can make an events page. Some ways to make an event page is on Facebook, Meetup, Splash That, and Eventbrite. Now that's not an exhaustive list, but it's some of the ones that are out there. I made my event on Eventbrite, then created a reciprocal event on Facebook, and sent the link to the Eventbrite page to RSVP. The seventh step is promoting. Promoting out to the world might be the most fun. This is where your partners could come into play. In our case, I asked an illustrator whom I admire, Sarah Beth, whose name is Wonderful on Instagram, if she could do a specially designed image that we can use to promote the event. And she did, she was interested. So I gave ourselves two weeks to promote the event to give enough time for people to hear about it and RSVP. 
You could share across your social media like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and through your email lists if you have one. And on, you know, houseplant enthusiast groups like on Facebook, and you could also encourage others to share to their audience. In our case, I created the hashtag New York City Plant Swap 17 so people could share in advance what they were thinking of bringing. The eighth step is the details. Before the event, you may want to take care of some minor details. So for instance, name tags and markers are extremely helpful so people can see each other's names. Having plates, drinking cups, and napkins is always useful. And knowing where to direct people if they need to use the bathroom can come in handy. The ninth step is simply showing up. If you're hosting the event, you're going to want to show up early and make sure everything is set up. I went two hours earlier to rearrange the furniture, pick up the salads, get the camera set up, and make sure the place was just overall prepared for the event. We sold 70 tickets, so I ended up checking in people for the first half hour. What I liked about checking people in is that I get a sense of everyone's name and share with them how the evening would unfold and of course answer any questions that they may have. The tenth step is to enjoy. This is the most important. You have to enjoy the event. Plant swaps are a ton of fun. They're incredibly rewarding and a great way to meet fellow plant lovers. So hopefully this video will inspire you to do a plant swap in your city or your neighborhood. And of course, if you're enjoying these videos, please subscribe to the channel. And you could always follow along on homesteadbrooklyn.com, here on YouTube, and on Instagram at homesteadbrooklyn. Bye!